Okay, so there's, this is called <clears throat> untempered masonite, and I had uh, I bought this at a uh, lumber yard here in town and gave them a cut list, alpine lumber, in case you want to come to Santa Fe and do that. But um, there's two, and there's two thicknesses. This is a quarter inch, and it's good for anything really, any size, even the biggest sizes. I just completed two large paintings. 30 by 36 and a 22 by 36 using quarter inch masonite. Uh, there's a eighth of an inch masonite which is really useful for little paintings, six by eights up to nine, twelve maybe, for location work. And so I would say either one um, is is useful for different reasons. The little the uh, little narrower one is a little bit more flexible. But um, and so you have those pre-cut and then. The, the linen comes in rolls and you simply roll that out and you know lay out the panels that you want to uh, uh, you know the panels that you want to make into boards and um, trace out the shape on, on the linen. Uh, this is the that's the raw linen side. This is it's been rabbit skin glued and it's got one coat of oil primer on it. And this style is called uh, Clausens. It's a Belgian linen, and it's number 66. If you would look at this closely, you see it's a kind of a medium texture with some tooth to it, but there's a variety of textures. Anyway, this is um, <clears throat> this is a standard kind of landscape texture. You don't want something too smooth. And the bigger the painting, I would say, the, the rougher the surface, it, it, typically. Uh, for the little paintings, they have a product called um, 15, and it comes in two uh, primings, a single and a double prime. The single prime has an advantage of being a little more absorbent, a little less slick. The double prime is a little bit more uh, slick, and uh, which is great for washes and other things. But the, the linen really is far superior to the cotton. It's less absorbent, especially when it's um, prepared in a professional way and um, just think it's a really great thing to, to use and you can't really get effects like this with cotton or gesso. This is um, called Miracle Muck and it's a polyvinyl acetate which is a, just a white glue, it's like Elmer's glue. It's available um, through a couple different um, providers. Um, but uh, it's uh, and it's, it's inexpensive. So the way you use this is you get it yourself just a regular roller tray like you're gonna use at you know painting a bedroom or something, and and just pour the pour the glue right out and put get you know plenty in there so that you can work the roller efficiently. <clears throat> I'll just set that aside. Um, it takes a little time to get to get the the roller. Um, oh, I wanted to show you that. I'm using a foam roller cover. It it sheds the least and it's easily cleaned up. They're very inexpensive, and um, so I've got a I've got a yellow one here, but they come in a couple of different styles. But it's a it's a short nap and. Just want to, to to roll that on as best I can, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna keep. <clears throat> I just have the linen set up right on the uh, right on the table and uh, the board right on top of the linen. So the linen is slightly overcut, cut slightly larger so um, that it can be trimmed later. The trick to this this um, glue adding the glue is to get it on evenly enough and but not too thick not too thick not too thin just right so I'm gonna be kind of careful there's a I've got almost enough glue on there <clears throat> put a little bit more on here and I'm gonna kind of get it on generally and I'm gonna carefully lay it off
be, I want to make sure that I get the ed edges well covered. And you, and just, you can see that there's a pattern on the blue and stuff like that, so it's not completely uniform. But once you put a little pressure on it, it will, it'll settle out very easily. And, and uh, so you want to just get it on like this. So it's 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 just kind of you know it's there's no big piles of it. It's it's more or less leveled off. Then I line it up on my linen. And I just put my body weight on it. And the bigger the bigger the linen, the more likely that you'll get bubbles in in the surface. That's where you use this thing. It's called the brayer, which is a kind of a hard um, plastic or rubber surface. It's used in um, printmaking, I think, often. In, in So what we want to do with this is from this, if, if we did have bubbles in here, this one does not, um, but I would work from the center to the periphery and just kind of rub it out. Also help just kind of from this side um, even the amount of glue on it. And you can hold it up to the light and see check if there's any bubbles and there's no bubbles on there. And then you want to just put it down in a place that you can put some weight on it. I'm just going to use these big books for now and just kind of put some weight on it. This will be dry in an hour, okay? And so um, that's that's one. I'm gonna show you another one. <laughs> so it's very simple once you get the hang of this. Part of it is just you know doing it, doing it once or twice. Uh, Cecilia is an expert at this now, having done it a few times. But. Um, you know, and just be kind of being a little careful, controlling uh, how much glue you get on there. Notice I turned it over, and I, I want to really make sure that the edge is well loaded, that there's not a lot of voids in the glue along the edge. But I'm careful, you know, sort of careful, but and I've got plenty of glue on this roller. I'm not rubbing it, uh, putting it on too dry, just kind of laying it off then just to kind of get it more or less equaled out without any big humongous puddles anywhere. I'll lay that down again, a little body pressure on it. <clears throat> you can hold it up to the light and see, and I don't see any bubbles on it. But just in case there well, you can take the brayer from the center again and just a little bit of pressure down and push it off. Don't really slam it down. If you really slam it down, you'll kind of start pushing the glue away. But you'll see if you have bubbles, and they usually don't, on some, this is a 12 by 16 panel, you usually won't get a bubble in something that's small. But you know, if you're doing an 18 by 24 or something larger, you may get a you may just get a bubble in it, and then you just work the bubble out, and you keep you keep checking it until it's worked out. <clears throat> and you can see how it's well mounted. There's a little bit of glue coming through the edge, but that looks <coughs> just fine. You just lay it right on top of the other one. Put a little pressure on it, and then. New Mexico, this will be drying an hour. You may want to let it set up overnight to let the glue really harden, and then you'll trim it eventually with a uh, with a utility blade. Or uh, we have one over there, that green knife right there. So you'll take you'll take one of these guys if I can get it to work, and you'll just let me just show you how I would do this. And, 
let's pretend this was dry, I would just hold this up and just kind of come in and cut into this. And then just, it'll be firmly connected to it and just trim it right along, right along that edge. And that's the way to trim those guys once they're dry. Uh, but a very simple process. Um, the linen comes in basically two size rolls, I think. Usually 54 and a half and 83 inches tall and three to five yards long. So, um, I typically will get the small one because sometimes, you know, a small roll of linen will produce enough panels for me for several months. And I, I paint several hundred paintings a year. The linen, uh, the linen I get is from Jerry's Artorama, and that's, you can get that online. Um, but it's the Claussen's linen that I like uh, to use. Um, Utrecht has a linen that is made for them by Claussen's that is similar and it's of equal quality. It's made by Claussen's and it's a Utrecht linen that is available on Utrecht.com Utrecht as well. So, and then the, uh, the glue is a Miracle Muck and that's available through Raphael's. Um, but I have this, this stuff on um, an email as well and I'm happy to send that to you if you send me your email address as well send you instructions and it'll have all the uh, uh, specifications in terms of um, the, the type of linen and the type of glue and things like that. Do you have to funnel the stuff back into the big container? Yeah, if, you, if it's, yeah, I mean, so you just pour it back in, you know. Yeah. The uh, linen, is that good just for mounting on panels or can you stretch it? Too? Linen can be stretched as well, yeah. The advantage of, the, of mounting on panels is you don't get as much um, movement. The, the stretcher bars move. Yeah, they do. And mm -hmm. they, um, so that's where you get a lot of cracking in stretched canvases. Mm -hmm. There's much less movement on something that's mounted on a panel. And most of my colleagues who are uh, some of the best painters in the United States right now use this method. It's a very, it's a, it's fundamentally accepted as an excellent way to protect the ground and the surface of the painting. What size do the big panels come in? Masonite. The masonite comes in four by eight sheets. Okay. So what I typically do, sometimes I'll just order a four by four, I'll order a four by eight sheet and I'll have them cut it once and then I'll cut small pieces out of it to whatever size I need, or I'll just give the cut list right to the lumber yard. That Some lumber yards will do this. Uh, Home Depot and Lowe's <coughs> will not, but a specialty lumber yard will typically do this, and there's one here in town in Santa Fe. I got a, uh, a saw, a table saw, uh -huh. and I tried it, and it, it just gets a little tricky and dangerous even for me when you get down to the really small ones. Uh, yeah, I mean, using a table saw takes some skill. Yeah, <laughs> and so if you don't, if you're not comfortable with doing that, hire somebody that is. Be safe. You know, use your hands for painting. Yeah. Do you know how how many like sixteen by twelves or six by eights or eight by tens you can get out of one of these sheets? I would suggest you just do a little map, grid, a, grid a map, grid. and yeah. and there's a thing called the cutting allowance. It takes the size of the blade in mind. So, for instance, if you think of a 48-inch sheet, it doesn't allow for two 24-inch cuts. You get one 24-inch length, then you have 23, and I think it's uh, 15 sixteenths. So it's not. It doesn't provide you with two 24-inch cuts. So they'll ask you about allowance. So what you do is you have to build in that allowance. So um, you don't get six, six, you don't get six eight-inch cuts out of a out of a forty-eight-inch sheet. You get seven, you get five cuts rather, and then you have uh, you have some waste or you have a smaller cut available at the end. And the brayer, where did you get that? The brayer is available at any art store. Would have a brayer and. Um, it's, I think Lino cuts is what they use they, to the ink a Lino board and then you use a brayer with paper on it. Some, some wood cuts, I, wood block printing uses that as well. But it's a way to even out a, to a surface and uh, 
in something a little heavy duty that you can press on a little bit. But you can see how simple it is, really. It does. It's not rocket science. Okay. 